Hello everybody, it's been quite a while since I last made a Yu-Gi-Oh! video. It has mainly been because the Resonators archetype have not been doing too well. They just got new support this month, so a bunch of new cards that actually allows them to go absolutely insane. As you can see, I have a 6 win streak, and I've reached the highest rank. Uh, just for full clarification, Resonators, Red Dragon Arcfiend, just so everybody's on the same page. Let's just start with one of the better matches I have to showcase, just so you guys can get a taste of how powerful this archetype can be, even when it's been fully shut down. So, it will lose like oh i just had the perfect opener i'm gonna end on a red supernova dragon a dispater and an abyss which is like one of the best setups you can do with this deck if not just straight up the best plus you also get the full back row which you you basically try and see what i'm going for here now the only problem is that my opponent actually has a nibiru and I did not play around it because I was just like, oh yes, I can do my red supernova dragon, my favorite card, I can get it out, I can actually do something absolutely insane. And uh, then, then it hits me, the Nibiru. And now I'm left with literally nothing really that I can do. The best I can do is send out the Rua Loop as like a blocker and I just hope for the best. Now, my enemy is playing Sword Soul, which under normal circumstances, in my opinion, especially if I go first, should be literally not even a problem. Uh, this game is gonna be quite the problem, as you'll see. Opponent starts out. He has, by the way, probably the best hand he could ever have asked for. He goes straight into the Baron de Fleur. He has extra plays. He, he even have the cells here. He's gonna try and spin back the, the two face downs I have, which is a wise choice. So, essentially, this guy had an Ibiru to shut down my entire board. And then he had everything to do literally anything he ever wanted. Uh, I do want to make sure his Baron de Fleur doesn't have any gate for when if I activate something on my next turn. Uh, he destroyed something. I can bring back uh, Red Dragon Arcfit from my graveyard with a new Crimson Gaia support. And obviously this is a new extra deck monster we have, which is called Scar Red Dragon Arcfiend. It uh, is kind of the replacement to Chaos Ruler, if you guys remember Chaos Ruler, in the sense that it gives you two level 8 bodies, so to speak. Now, the problem is he literally had everything. He had the Protoss, he even had the Shizau, and he can lock me out of Dark Monsters. Like, the only reason my uh, Synchro Monster stayed on the field was because of the Soul Resonator that I banished, as you saw. Um, tried to bait out some stuff, so did not really work out. Uh, luckily, I have a red zone, so I'm like I'm prepping for it, and then I have an Imperm, so I can stop him from activating the Protoss, which will lock me out of Dark Monsters, which uh, hopefully will allow me to actually play the game again. Uh, make sure to activate this before he activates the effect. That also gives him an incentive to try and pop my feel. And then obviously I uh, impermanence it, so its effect is negated. Try and negate this effect for some reason, not really sure what he's thinking of. Maybe he wants it to not say uh, it's a Red Dragon Arc Bean, even though it, that doesn't work like that with the Red Zone. So I'm just trying to survive here, literally survival mode right here. Bring back uh, Red Dragon Arc Fiend so I can do Lubellion, so I can actually try and bait out some negates so I can start doing plays. This allows me to grab a Dispater, which will potentially allow me to go into an Abyss if I do this correctly, and I recall doing this correctly. Uh, first we're doing this, he actually had an Effect Veil as well. Again, Mans had literally everything. Go into the Abyss, which will allow us to negate the Sword Soul Supreme, and that should allow us to pretty much take this game, as you'll see in just a bit. He does have an Imperm, but doesn't matter, I'm just taking the opportunity now that I know what his back row is to actually get rid of the Sword Soul Supreme. And then we're doing a Scarlight, pop his field, and then try and end the game. Now that we had such an intense duel, let's go and check how this deck performs against the best deck in the game currently being Snake Eyes. You need to open hand traps or bestial against Snake Eyes, so you're just done for. Like, I don't, I don't think any hand you draw can deal with a full Snake Eyes board. Unless you had a bestial to disrupt the IP Mascarina or a hand trap to, you know, stop that play. Like here, it was Ash. I was comfortable using the, the Ash where I did because I had an effect trailer. So if we did do uh, the Snake Eyes Ash, I would be able to negate it and stop his turn. Unfortunately for me, he's running Castilla Unicorn. A lot of decks actually run that package currently. And as a result, he was able to get uh, Baron de Flew out. I actually did a tactical imperm here where normally you would probably do it after when he responds to it and then lock it down, but I was kind of gonna bait that I didn't have anything else and then I played my Crimson Gaia so I can start playing. And at this stage he's checkmated, like he took my Scar Red so I can't do normal plays and that's fine, I'm gonna go into a Scar Light instead, 
But not just that, I'm also gonna summon a Bane that brings back the Skylight. I pop his field and then it's pretty much over as you'll see right here. Obviously, if I popped it here, I would do a lot of damage, but I wouldn't actually be in a set situation for winning. Need to do this first, bring back the Skylight, and now he's literally dead. He can't do anything. I like shotgunning Maxi to play around Triple Tactics talent. You don't need to do that yourself if, if like, you want to play around something else. You, you kind of pick what you want to play around, Gamma or Triple Tactics talent or whatever. Gamma's not popular right now, so good idea to play around Triple Tactics talent, in my opinion at least. Uh, Kestia, Tier Elements. It is what it is. Obviously I resolve Maxi. Usually that just means you win the game. Absolutely broken cards should be banned. I don't know why they think... Like, honestly... Part of greed is, is less powerful, and that's banned. I don't get it. Uh, doing everything I can to bait out as much of his usage as possible. I want to bait out the Fenrir, I want to bait out the Birth, and I want to potentially get rid of his back row. So that's like where my focus is. That's why I haven't even normal summoned the Soul Resonator. He also got rid of my Dispater, so I kind of want to finish the game this turn. I, I don't really want to go too late. I don't want to deal with a bunch of stuff. I could have stopped his Kid Kalos, but I'd rather stop his follow-up plays when he, you know, mills the other tier element. I think that's just better. It's a bit of a surprise in that sense. Uh, here I brought back the Bestial using the Regain, just so I had something to send away with the Bone Arc Fiend. Figured why not, save a card in hand. Seems reasonable. This stage I'm going straight for the Red Supernova Dragon. I know which deck he's running because obviously I'm seeing it right on the board. So I know Red Supernova Dragon just hands down wins this game. Which is why I went for him. Popping his field. This is where Called by the Grave is really useful if he happened to mill a tier element. Which as you can see he, he kind of did. He got to send that to the graveyard and now he can fuse. But I hit the Called by the Grave and he gives up. Luckily we have a one card combo these days. So it doesn't matter if we just open Resonator Call as our only play. It'll allow us to get Abyss and this paid out. Assuming we don't get Hand Trap which happened there. Could go into Pixie Dragon here. Level 7 we have it uh, right there. I uh, figured that since I have a 2 I can just activate it and do the Synchro Summon on his turn if I need to. However, uh, attack was declared. It did not allow me to use the Synchro Summon effect. I'm not sure exactly what the ruling are there. Maybe I just chose not to. Can't really recall, but I, I there's something in my memory saying that I couldn't activate it. He activates Maxi. I'm like, challenge accepted. And I already start strategizing around, okay, how can I OTK him now, even if he happens to, I don't know, maybe draw any view. Like, <laughs> why would he draw any view? At least I got this far without him drawing any view, so I'm happy about that. Allows me to play a bit. Obviously, if, if I don't kill him this turn, I'm dead. Going into the King Calamity, it's a big beat stick. Just need to... Uh, like, pop, summon back, and then that's enough. And I saw his field glow up there out of nowhere, and I was just like, ah, okay, that's Nibiru. Too bad your check made it. Can actually special summon a Wild Wind with the Rua Loop on the board. Make a level 8, pop it. And now I go into this Pater, take back the King Calamity, which is just a 4,000 beat stick, and with the 500 damage from the Skylight, he's dead. Easy as that. We're just gonna go over a quick demonstration of the Calamity lock. Now, I am doing a bit of a fancier play than you could usually do, and I'll try and explain a bit here. So, what you could just do here is... T well, I didn't want to get rid of anything from my hand, but I could have just discarded the Triple Tactics style. Like, there are so many ways you can you can do it. Like, assuming you do the, the normal combo where you'll have a Crimson Resonator and a Red Rising Dragon, you can literally just take three level twos, make the Scar Red, uh, send the Scar Red away for the Bestial Lubellion, and then you have everything you need to do a basic Calamity Lock. Obviously, I had a bit more gas, so I decided to actually set up that I can bring it back with the Red Zone and then go into Etude of the Branded. It's very important that you toggle on in this scenario. And then this needs to be its own separate chaining. I can't chain it number two because then King Calamity won't lock. And this guy is gonna try and evenly match me, which he can't because he's Calamity locked. And as a result, he gives up. In case you were curious about what deck he was using, it's just hard degenerate stun. Like nobody likes to go against this. Bit of a nightmare scenario here, opening literally zero hand traps against the best deck in the game. Luckily, we have a Biss deal, so we can. Banish the IP Mask Green when he targets it to try and set it on the field, which denies him from summoning an Avalusa, which would be 
I guess up to four months to the gates, probably three usually. Uh, at this stage, I definitely should have taken the Princess instead of the Flame Birch, but this is a bit of an earlier game in the timeline, so mistakes can happen, right? Uh, at this stage, I'm tunneling in that, oh, I can summon a Red Supernova Dragon with the first Crimson Resonator, then Magnemoth, then Special Summon Vision Resonator. So that's my go-to play. Also, I don't want to even look at Max C, so that has to go right away. That, that could be disaster. Uh, especially because for some reason I have a good track record of them drawing into Nibiru whenever they max C and it tends to be early a lot of the time. They uh, call by the grave on my Bone Arc Fiend which is kind of a disaster but luckily the Vision Resonator allowed me to add the Soul Resonator. I have a Wild Wind that I can summon and that allows me to, if I wanted to, go into a Red Supernova Dragon. I technically have the material here but I'm like I kind of need the Scar Red to pop the field. He realizes that, okay, he's probably dead. Yeah, he gives up. We're going second against Branded. Luckily, they didn't have Branded Fusion. Didn't really have any hand traps. Also, 60 card pile deck in uh, Duelist Cup. And this is a bit earlier in the timeline. You can see that by the fact that my Scarlet isn't even Royal. I am prone to make some misplays here. I think I could have OTK'd my opponent if I had played properly, which obviously I didn't, but it turns out to be an absolutely insane and interesting game, so we should still take a look at it even though there are some misplays. I uh, decide to go straight into a Scarlight to attempt to force his uh, hand negate, like the, the thing he added, I saw he was adding this, so I knew that I needed to deal with that first things first. What I should have done there is summon the Vision Resonator and then do the Lubellion play, because I get shut down by doing that order right now, because when I try to summon the Druid's Worm, he's gonna have a negate for that, and that just completely ruins my play, and the only thing I can do is go battle phase and attack into its monster, so I can uh, re-summon my Scarlight, which will then allow me to go on from the place that I technically should have been able to do. Like, what I could have done is summon the Vision Resonator, go into the Lubellion, and then go into the Dispater, do the Wulu banish, bring back the Scarlight, then I could have popped the field and then summon a uh, Hot Red Dragon Arcane in Abyss. Obviously, everything in attack, it would have been enough to kill him, so I would have won. Did not do that though. Also, he has Red Reboot because I was under Max C, so he just kept drawing and he has like every single tool in his deck to deal with me, which is what makes this game very interesting. And, uh, you know, he, he did go first, might have bricked. I might have misplayed, kinda evens out a bit. He has Alba Linatus. Not many branded decks runs this, but it just means that if they're against Dark Dragon monsters, which that's like all I summon, right? They can just clear my board for free. Now I do summon this bag as like a precaution, but he just had a Super Poly. Also one of the biggest counters to, to my deck, to be honest. Luckily he could not finish me off. So I do get a chance to show what I can do in a bit of a better scenario than the previous game. However, uh, surprise, surprise, I'll end up being under Maxi again, as you will see in just a bit when he's done setting. Also, this is a negate, by the way. Like, you just have a whole field negate on anything that's uh, face up. As you can see, Maxi again, again. So I just play in a very unfavorable matchup, making sure to force that to happen. And then now I'm gonna be setting up to try and win this game by summoning the Dispater back. <laughs> Unfortunately for him, he negated the entire field, so... You know, it is what it is. Luckily, I picked the Dispater first, so I can actually... bait out this whole chain of action, where the Red Rain then protects my Dispater, which will actually be important in a bit as well. So now I have the Abyss back. And I feel like just going straight into a Scar Red with this. And then also I replaced the Crimson Guy, which is, which is very important because it was negated. So it allows me to, I guess, summon another monster, which will make it so I can kill him. Let's see, brings it back. He has this. Uh, normally that will like block the attack, but mine is unaffected, so I just go in anyways, and then I have enough to actually win the duel right there. As you can see, quite an interesting game, all things considered. This is a bit of an earlier version of my pile deck where I actually use Supe. Like, you could technically still use that if you want. You can see, not royal. 
I saw that, okay, the, the planet pathfinder, that means it is Kassir, that means the unicorn is good to hit when I have the effect Vela. Under Max C again. Now, I'll let you guys guess how many hand traps he, he, he gets, and uh, you'll probably be blown away. Like, there are probably some misplays in this game. Not sure if I should have won it, to be honest, because I just have no respect for his Max C. And I'll just play into it. That's one effect, Vela. Just. Keep Luckily, uh, I was running the super attack here, so it allows me to keep playing. That's two effect Veilers. I'm gonna banish one of those. <laughs> allows him to draw up to four, if you know if you know what I'm saying. Not that that happened, but it, it could have, you know. Nibiru, I uh, go into hot red dragon up in the abyss, so I can actually go into a dissipator and uh, still sort of get a board going. Except for one fact, like now it's a Nibiru and two effect Veilers, right? You'd be like, oh, where's the third effect Veiler? About that, there, there it is, there it is. So now I can't bring back the Abyss. Uh, luckily for me, like, uh, you might be like, oh, why didn't you attack the Nibiru? Well, I know it's Kestira. He needs a clean ball track to do a lot of his plays. He put down Dimensional Fish and I'm like, okay, so what if I just use the Dispater effect to pop this? Like, do you have any play at that stage? Because you kind of like locked in your on your board, right? And that he just gives up. This is the last of the early games that we are showcasing here. Again, you can see the no royal there, so it's just get those out of the way real quick, right? He has an ash blossom, so that means I'm kind of out of a play. I'm going to search for the golem. Which, uh, this is the only way I can really do that at this stage. That means I have a disruption for his Flame Birch. And uh, if he plays the Snake Eyes Edge, I can still in infinite imperm it. And, I mean, I have plenty of hand traps, so I'm just like, yeah, you only have two cards. Okay, that was predictable, you normally summoned it, great. And unfortunately for him, he thought he could still get the effect off. That's, that's not how it works. Again, bit of a misplay by him makes it a bit less interesting I guess but like I, I could have still done what I wanted to do I would have just sent another fiend to the graveyard like it would have been pretty much the same if he removed my monster or not so it's not like that actually matters now here, here's the thing it's like oh you've already won right uh, about that Nibiru yeah always expect a random Nibiru just it I don't know why it happens so often for me I'm just gonna be honest it's just they always have it they just they just always have it, don't they? Just how it is. But he's dead, so I guess I win. Like, should be enough to, to kill him. Like, I could have bought back something as well with this Pada. This is gonna be the last game I showcased. Didn't have much to work with in my opening hand. And guess what? It's Maxi time. That is. I think to some degree I could have Calamity Lock my opponent here because I'm using 60 card pile deck so I have access to the Calamity Lock if I needed to. But it would require me to risk and remove the Dispater. Like what I do instead is I bring this back as the cost. But I could have just used the Dispater as a cost and then try and go on for the Calamity Lock which might honestly have been smarter. But I was afraid of playing into too many hand traps so I wanted to make a rather strong okay sport just to deal with whatever he had now here's math mech and there are some things that i learned in this duel that i didn't know before first up that's one called by the grave uh, spoilers he have two just if anybody wondered just feel like that's important uh, this card actually does nothing to my uh, my trap cards which i didn't know at the time like it's only when you actually flip it up like activate it if it's uh Continuous effect while it's already active on the field uh, link rebuild does nothing So I could have done so many things that I just chose not to do Instead he goes for this play I was thinking many times to interrupt him But I was like, oh, okay, this is just I negate he'll use the quick effect negate then I'll affect Vela And there's the second call by the grave which just completely ruins my entire plan Now he needs to get rid of the truth of the branded simply because else it would interrupt his link place like everything he does would be banished so he kind of had to get rid of that and he's gonna go for the access code talker otk and the only reason i'm activating brand of the beast here 
knowing that it'll be banished, is I want this in defense mode now. I want like two bodies on the field actually, if, if possible, you know. But apparently that it didn't work, so he just loses the game instead. Now for the deck lists, I will say that there are a bunch of adjustments you can do to them. Like with this, it's not optimal to run two red supernova dragon. I run it because of Castier Unicorn. Uh, I never actually got any use out of the Triple Tactics talent, nor did I get anything out of really Nibiru ever since I added it. So you would be able to fill, for example, another Imperm if you wanted to. You would be able to like go King Calamity if you wanted to either either way. And if you do want a Calamity lock with this version of the deck, you just add uh, it to the branded. Now this is what I would suggest you do, but you could also go with the one I showcased uh, initially. Uh, we have. Three Effect Veilers, two Synchron Resonator, three Maxis, one Crimson Resonator. You could technically run two, but you don't need more than one. Uh, two Vision Resonators, three Ash Blossoms, three Soul Resonator, one Wandering King Wildwind, one Obsessive Vulvua Loop, three Bone Arc Fiends. We need three Earthbound Prisoner Stone Sweeper because it's basically like a Resonator call, but you can use it as a Bestial target. We have Bestial Magnum Hut, we have uh, Bestial Saunia, we have Bestial Druid's Worm, we have the Bestial Rebellion times three, we have a Foolish Burial, we have three Resonator call, and then we actually have two Void Apocalypse. Now, this is a Foolish Burial for your Bone Arc Fiend, which allows you to go full combo and end on a Bestial Dispater and an Abyss with just one Void Apocalypse and some discard fodder in hand. And then obviously the cost to uh, summon Bone Arc Fiend from the graveyard, you just send the Void Apocalypse there, so it doesn't stay around on the field. So, using two of those, you can technically run up to three, you can also just one run. It bas basically how many cards you want to run in your deck and, and like kind of what adjustments you want to make. Uh, one branded regained, we are using two crimson guy, you could technically run three if you wanted to, but it's optimal to run two. You can search it out, You like it's so rare you need the third. We have two called by the graves, cross out designator, three infinite impermanence, we have fiendish golem, we have branded beast, we have etude of the branded, we have red zone, we are using three red rising dragons, we are using an ancient pixie dragon, we are using two red dragon arc fiends, we're using a Scarlight Red Dragon Arc Fiend, we're using a Scar Red, sometimes two, depends on how you want to run it. You could replace one of them with the Chaos Angel if you wanted to, that's completely acceptable, especially when you're using Calamity Lock. Then two Hot Red Dragon Arc Fiend Abyss, we're using a Bane, like Hot Red Dragon Arc Fiend Bane, we're using Bestial Dispater, obviously the Chaos Angel I just pointed out, then we're using Hot Red Dragon King Calamity, and then a Red Supernova Dragon. This is a 60 card pile list, I don't think I would make any changes to this one. You could technically replace some stuff like the uh, Triple Tactics Thrust and Talent with the Supe package, which would, you just search Supe, then you have three of these, one of these. It's running three Effect Veilers, a Synchron Resonator, Chain Resonator, three Maxis, two Crimson Resonators, one of these optional, you could technically drop it. You could run up to three Vision Resonators if you want to as well. Uh, it's running two Vision Resonators though. Three Ash Blossoms, three Soul Resonator, one Wandering King Wildwind, one Obsessive Uvulup, three Bone Arc Fiends, three Earthbound Prisoner, Stone Sweeper, one Bestial Magnemart, Bestial Saunia, Bestial Druid's Worm, Bestial Baldrake here, which uh, I put a note on the previous deck list that you could add it instead of the two of the brand if you didn't want to do Calamity Locks. Uh, three Bestial Lubellions, we have one Foolish Burial here, we have three Resonator Call, Triple Tactics Talents, as was mentioned at the start there, two Chaos Space, extra Lubellions, can also just help negate, like, bait a bunch of stuff and can give you a draw as well to some degree. We have the three thrusts, we have two void apocalypse, I went over why these are important in the, the first deck list. Brand regained, we have three crimson guy because it's a bigger deck so want more use out of like potentially being able to search with it. Obviously you can run le one less and one more void apocalypse if you want to. I just don't like running two for some reason. Uh, two called by the grave, a cross out designator, three infinite impermanences, red rain, the idea is if you could max it, you could potentially end on a smaller board, triple tactics, thrust, and then set the red rain, and then you, you kind of have a board wipe and you can make your abyss or dispate or whatever it is uh, kind of immune. Then we have a fiendish golem. This is also just something you can go into with if you're max seed to uh, just tr try and make a minimal situation. I think it was showcased in one of the plays where I have the 
Bone Arc Fiend down and then I had the Imperm and the Golem. You can see how it can disrupt. Then we have Branded Beast, we have the Toot of the Branded, we have Red Zone, we have uh, three Red Rising Dragons, Ancient Pixie Dragon, two Red Dragon Arc Fiends, Scarlight, uh, Scar Red, two Abyss, a Bane, Dispater, Chaos Angel, uh, King Calamity, and uh, Red Supernova Dragon. I also have a pure list here. Love to run two Red Supernova Dragon. You should probably drop it for the Scarlight. And then some people want to run 40 card deck. I can like I can accommodate that. Just problem solved. Also need to remove that for a Synchron Resonator. So you could do that, but I'll just showcase the one I prefer, which is not 40 card. But you can easily trim it down to 40 card if that's your jam. But anyways, let's go over the list. So, one Supe, two Effect Veilers, a Synchron Resonator, a Chain Resonator, three Maxis, two Crimson Resonators. You can easily drop one if you wanted to as well. Like, again, there are many adjustments you can make yourself. Two Vision Resonators, three Ash Blossoms, we have three Soul Resonators, we have one Rinkin Wild Wind, we have uh, one Obsessive Uruh Loop, we have three Bone Arcwings, we have three Sope Dusk Walkers to go with the Sope, we have three Earthbound Immortal Stone Sweepers, we have Foolish Burial, we have three Resonator Calls, we have a Void Apocalypse, we have two Crimson Gaia, we have two Called by the Grave, we have a Cross Out Designator, we have three Imperms, we have a Red Rain, we have Fiendish Golem, and we have a Red Zone. Then for the extra decks, three Red Rising Dragons, an Ancient Pixie Dragon, two Red Dragon Arc Fiends, a Scarlight, the Scar Red, which honestly you should probably run to instead of the Red Supernova Dragon second one, as I said. Hot Red Dragon Arc Fiend Abyss, a Bane, this Pater, Red Nova Dragon, because this, the pure version, I mean you could run King Calamity if you wanted to, you could also run Void Ogre, there's a whole bunch of Dark uh, Dragon Synchro Monsters you could run instead, and then obviously the Red Supernova Dragon. These are all the opponents I had in the video, I only took replays from interesting matches to some degree, so assume all the gaps are just, th th they were either one-sided to me or nothing really interesting happened. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, I'll see you again next time.